I've worked in the medical field for over 15 years and in research specifically over the last seven years. I've worked with doctors and health professionals in almost every discipline, neurology, internal medicine, immunology, infectious disease, physical medicine and rehab, and many more. Over the years, I have gathered the most impactful, most influential, most life-changing research that has had a positive impact on me. Put it down on paper, and I'm finally ready to share it with you. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification because this is only part two. There is much more to come. And if you haven't watched part one, click this video above my head and come back to this one. I guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt, you will benefit from these videos and this information. If you don't get anything, let me know. I will discuss physical health, mental health, and spiritual health. So sit back, hit that like button, and let's rock this thing. All right, number 18, getting sick. Do this to immediately win the battle. Our sinuses, mouths, throats, and guts are not sterile. These areas are full of bacteria, good and bad. Some of us have E. coli in our colon and strep in our throats. The good and bad bacteria most of the time are imbalanced and we have what is called homeostasis. Introduce a virus or an external stressor, the bad bacteria take advantage of our vulnerability and we get sick. So how do we win this battle with the quickness? Easy, add back in more good bacteria. Research has demonstrated there is a bacteria in our body called Lactobacillus sacchae that acts as a microbial shield. It protects us from bad bacteria. Guess what bacteria is in the Garden of Life probiotics? 100 billion bacteria, 34 probiotic strains. Lactobacillus sacchae. So sore throat, gargle the probiotics. Stomach bug, ingest eight to 10 capsules. Sinus infection, well, you get the picture. Number 19, crazy facts about ultra processed foods, WTF. Did you know that the same corporations who were pro promoting cigarettes were healthy are now the same folks pushing processed foods? Did you know that these processed foods are designed in such a way to make them hyper palatable, so tasty, so addictive, and so overwhelming to our senses that we just can't put them down? We all know that salt is used as a preservative, but did you know that salt is also used to hide the taste of manufacturing? Take out the salt and you'll say, hmm, that tastes like metal. Did you know that big corporations love to push protein on you even though it is completely unnecessary? Most people have twice as much protein in their diets than they need and all that extra protein gets converted into sugars and fats. Number 20, this fruit has more probiotics than any supplement on the market. An apple contains about 100 million bacteria, a more diverse range than any other dietary supplement out there. But you aren't taking advantage of these beneficial bacteria. Why? Well, most of these microbes are in the core of the apple. I used to not eat it. It was fibrous and unappetizing. But by not eating the core, I was missing out on 90% of those amazing good bacteria. The same stuff we buy in expensive pill form. So next time you have an apple on the menu, try eating the entire thing. I hear some of you saying the apple seeds have trace amounts of cyanide, and you would be correct, but the amount is negligible, and you should have no problem with a single daily core a day. If it worries you that much, just remove the seeds as you eat through the apple. Number 21, the most nutritious food you keep throwing away. Carrot tops are extremely rich in nutrients, containing around six times more vitamin C than the root. They are also loaded with potassium, calcium, and phytonutrients. Avocados, the healthiest part of it, is the dark green portion closest to the peel. This area it has the highest amount of health-boosting antioxidants, so before you toss that peel away, scrape it out clean so you can get the most beneficial part of that fruit in your belly. Watermelon or melon rinds, I used to throw them away. The rind contains the same nutrients the actual fruit does, but in higher concentrations of antioxidants and amino acids, fiber, and minerals, and vitamins such as A, C, B6, potassium, and zinc. Cook them or pickle them. Add them to salads. Lots of things you can do with the rinds. Number 22, the most powerful antioxidant you aren't even aware of. I take supplements that I know will benefit me. Omega-3s, methylated B complex, magnesium glyconate, sometimes zinc, sometimes NAC when I have a lung infection, sometimes vitamin D when I'm not getting enough sun, creatine, and that's about it. 
Well, I just added melatonin to my daily regimen and this is why. Turns out that melatonin is an extremely powerful lipophilic antioxidant and is a free radical scavenging powerhouse. It also has a huge anti-inflammatory role as well as immunomodulatory action. So researchers are now looking at melatonin and its effect on obesity, cardiovascular diseases, immune disorders, infectious diseases, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, osteoporosis, and even even infertility. Melatonin seemingly more than just for sleep me thinks. Number 23, if you supplement vitamin D, you better do this too. Worldwide, roughly 1 billion people are deficient in vitamin D. This deficiency has brought about an era of mass supplementation. The problem with vitamin D supplementation, excess vitamin D can be extremely harmful, can lead to kidney stones and problems with your heart if you aren't also taking magnesium. So vitamin D raises calcium levels in the blood and can cause something called metastatic calcification, which is widespread calcium deposition. This can happen in your heart, kidney stones, etc. Magnesium is essential to metabolize vitamin D. So taking large doses of D can deplete your magnesium, plus most of us are deficient in magnesium to begin with. So if you take D, be sure you're also taking magnesium glyconate too. 24. Why is magnesium supplementation so important? We know 75% of the U.S. population is deficient in magnesium. We typically get it from leafy greens and vegetables. And if you're low in magnesium, you might have issues sleeping or even insomnia. You may have muscle cramps, muscle twitching, chronic low energy, and maybe just be in a bad mood. Why? Well, magnesium takes up part of over 350 enzymes, so we are constantly using it in our bodies. One reason why we need it so much. Most of these enzymes help our mitochondria function, and mitochondria make us energy or ATP. Also our sodium potassium pump, which is critical to stabilizing our cell membrane and for our neurons to fire signals, magnesium provides the energy for the pump to function. So yeah, kind of a big deal, right? Number 25, does this nutrient really stop balding and prevent prostate cancer? How does salt palmetto stop hair loss and decrease prostate inflammation? Well, our testicles make testosterone, which is then converted into something called DHT, or dehydrotestosterone. DHT does serve several benefits, but it can also destroy hair follicles by binding to hair follicle receptors, leading to miniaturization of the hair follicles over time. End result, our hair falls out and dies. Same thing with the prostate. It allows for more binding to the androgen receptor, which then can cause spreading out and increase in the cells of the prostate, which activates a chronic inflammatory response. Saw palmetto inhibits an enzyme, 5-alpha reductase, which decreases DHT production and the amount that can bind to androgen receptors, thus decreasing prostate inflammation and hair loss. Number 26, smokers who take this supplement live longer. Recent research showed people who were deficient in this nutrient compared to smokers who got enough of it, the smokers lived longer. Yep, you heard me right, the smokers lived longer. Other research is also pointing to this supplement as being the only nutrient that decreases the rate of aging and increases lifespan. You can take this and live longer. Which I, am I talking about? Omega-3s. Omega-3 fatty acids are incorporated into the cellular membranes of all tissues of the body. New research shows that there are measurable changes in cellular membrane content that occurs within days of increasing your daily consumption. Our eyes, our brain, our heart have much more fatty acids than other tissues. Bottom line, it plays a huge role in proper functioning of the cell. Number 27, what is your omega-3 index score? You better know this. Bill Harris, American professor and researcher focusing on human nutrition, is well known for his research related to omega-3s, cardiovascular disease, and neuropsychiatric diseases. In his research, he notes that those with an 8% omega-3 index score live on average five years longer than those who average 5%. He also talks about how low consumption of marine sources like seafood is one of the top preventable causes of death. So next time you see your doctor, get your omega-3 index score. Most people in the United States are at about 5%. Research points to 8% as being the level to achieve. A 1.5 gram to 2 gram increase in intake brings you from 4 to 8%. Number 28, an omega fatty acid imbalance is keeping you sick. Cell membranes play a whole host of different functions in the body, including signaling and communication. Omega-3s and omega-6s compete for space on the cell membrane surface. They can attach to the same receptors. The main omega-6 fatty acid is arachidonic acid, and when it is released by cells, it transforms into thromboxanes, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. These may sound familiar. These are inflammatory. 
Omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory, directly affect arachidonic acid metabolism because they displace it from the cell membranes. They also compete with arachidonic acid for the enzymes that create these inflammatory markers. So the net effect of consuming more omega-3s, the body synthesizes fewer arachidonic acid-derived inflammatory mediators, less inflammation. Number 29, scary food facts that will blow your mind. Here are a couple of true statements about humans and their diets today. The average person believes they only make about 15 food-related decisions per day, but they actually make more than 200 decisions about food per day. There are over 4,000 new agents that have entered our food supply intentionally or inadvertently, almost none of which have been evaluated as potential causes of obesity or diabetes. A single fast food style meal can increase your serum interleukin-6 which is a potent marker of inflammation, by 100%, peaking about six hours after the meal. Inflammation is the foundation of chronic disease. We are eating more pro-inflammatory foods than ever before. We are living a more inflamed life. 80% of the food in grocery stores are processed. Number 30, what is an inflammatory diet? Seven foods to avoid. An inflammatory diet is a pattern that is strongly related to the release of inflammatory mediators. This dietary pattern has been demonstrated time and time again. Foods that involve high heat to make are extremely inflammatory, like many of the refined cooking oils and foods we eat that are cooked in these high heat oils like fried foods. Two, foods with a high glycemic index or load, in other words, foods high in sugar. Avoid these seven foods. One, sugar. Of course, fruits and veggies are not included. Two, cooking oils like corn, cottonseed, safflower, soy, and sunflower. Three, trans fats. You know these are the fried foods we all love so much. Four, white flour and refined grains like your breads, your pastas, cookies, cakes, chips, pretzels, crackers, etc. Five, excessive alcohol because we know how much sugar is in alcohol, right? Six, brown fried foods, and seven, processed meats because they are chuck full of sugars and preservatives. For 31, did you hear about horseradish? Holy smokes. Ever heard of glucosinolates? Turns out horseradish is chuck full of them. It has a ton of nutrients, calcium, fiber, folate, manganese, magnesium, potassium, vitamin C, and zinc. It's antibacterial and kills harmful bacteria and microbes that result in infections. If you feel a cold or sinus infection coming on, give horseradish a try. Clears out the sinuses. Soooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooo
one word neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine, glutamate, acetylcholine, cortisol and adrenaline. And the exaggerated response is due to a neurotransmitter imbalance. So for most the immediate potential solutions, start taking methylated B-complex vitamin. Within a few days, you will notice a huge difference in how you feel. Number 35, three questions to identify if your anxiety is related to a nutrient deficiency. Here are three questions that will help you identify if you have anxiety related to a neurotransmitter deficiency. Number one, have you had it on and off your entire life? If it is persistent and unabated, most likely a true mental illness. The fact that it comes and goes, it is transient, lends itself to being a deficiency. Can you point to a specific trigger? Just like I explained earlier, I had everything I ever wanted, yet I still was depressed at the times. There were no specific events that triggered how I was feeling. And then number three, have you ever tried anxiety medications and how did they make you feel? Did they make you feel like a zombie in a fog? Then it's likely your anxiety and fear are related to a deficiency. Number 36, boost testosterone naturally by doing this. For some reason, testosterone levels are dropping. Research shows testosterone in men has been in a slow and constant decline for several decades, and that's not good. What can we do? Well, there's two things. One is exercise, and the other is adding these foods into your diet. So number one on the list, oysters. Oysters are extremely high in zinc, which is essential for testosterone production. Number two, leafy green vegetables, specifically spinach, Swiss chard, and kale. They are loaded with magnesium, and research has found that increased magnesium levels leads to increases in testosterone. Number three, fatty fish and fish oil. Several studies have shown low fat diet leads to low testosterone levels. The wrong kind of fat is bad, but the right kind is essential. Okay, so that does it for part two. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification because there is much more impactful and influential life-changing, health-improving information coming your way. Come check out my channel too for a more complete discussion on any of these topics that I just covered. Research Nurse Chris out.